Now here's a scary truth. Your smart home might be too smart for its own good. Every connected device from your TV to a toothbrush is another potential entry point for hackers. And since a lot of IoT manufacturers cut corners on security, they are often the weakest link in your home network. Attackers love this stuff. Why go after your firewall when they can compromise a smart light bulb, pivot into your router, and start snooping on your traffic? Don't panic though, we got this. Once you know what is connected and isolate it properly, your risk drops dramatically. Now, yesterday we locked down your router and we set up a guest network. Today we're going to see who's actually living on that network because your Wi Fi might be more crowded than you actually think. We will also learn how to spot weird devices and which gadgets belong on your main network versus your guest network. We are going to be kicking off unwanted devices and learning how to sandbox your smart home so it does not spy on you. What's up, s'mores? I am Shannon Morse. Welcome to day five of my 30 day security challenge, the series where we build your privacy fortress one day at a time. I kind of like that slogan. We are building your privacy fortress. It's kind of cool. Every single day for the next month with a few breaks built in, we are tackling one small practical thing you can do to make your online life safer. You can follow along with the checklist and the blog version over at shannonrmorse.com or just hit that playlist on my channel and go day by day. Step one, identify devices. So go ahead and grab that notepad you were using earlier. It is time to play find the intruder. Log back into your router's admin interface. You can usually do that by typing in 192.168.1.1 into your browser. If you watched yesterday's video, you already know how to log in. Once you are in, look for something called client list or connected devices or network work map, something along those terms. This will show you every single phone, laptop, smart TV, and random gadget that is currently connected to your Wi-Fi. These are gonna be your client devices. Now, ideally, everything on this list should look familiar. You have your phone, your laptop, your partner's tablet, your kid's smartphone, your TV, a light bulb, a litter robot, whatever it might be. Now go through that list and write down each and every single one item that you recognize. But if you see something that's a little weird, Weird, like a random string of letters or a device name that you don't recognize, that's gonna be a little bit sus. So here's a quick little trick. Turn off one of your devices, like your TV or a smart plug, and refresh that whole list. You can just refresh it in your browser. If the weird one disappears from that list, congrats, you found your mystery device, that just happened to be the one that you had turned off. If it doesn't, well, it might be time to change your Wi-Fi password and kick out that uninvited guest. Another pro tip, some devices will only show a model number like ESPV underscore 12E or Tuya underscore light or something like that, something weird. You can sometimes Google the model number to figure out what a device is before you start walking around your house just turning everything off. Then one by one, move your smart devices over over to your guest network. So how are we gonna do that? Step two is sorting your devices into groups. Now let's go ahead and separate your gadgets into two different groups. You're gonna have your trusted devices and your IoT devices. Trusted devices are things like your phone, your laptop, or your desktop computer, stuff that you actively use and you keep updated. IoT devices, AKA internet of things, are gonna be everything else, like smart lights, thermostats, cameras, robot vacuums, pet feeders, pet litter boxes, watches, speakers, your car, your fridge, anything that connects to Wi-Fi. We are separating the smart home IoT stuff because it might not be as secure as your normal operating system stuff. IoT gadgets are designed for convenience, but that convenience often comes at the cost of security. They might have weak passwords or outdated software. They might have hidden vulnerabilities, and sometimes they even get hacked without you ever even noticing. So let's go ahead and move on to step three, which is moving those IoT devices. We are going to put all those IoT devices into a secondary guest network that you created yesterday. So everything that's listed under IoT, Internet of Things, Smart Home category, those should live there. This keeps them separated from your personal devices like your laptop and your phone. If one of those devices ends up getting compromised, the attacker cannot access your sensitive data, which is on that separate network. They are sandboxed from each other. 
They are isolated from your most sensitive data, like your work files, your photos, and your documents. Some devices are gonna make this really easy through their mobile apps. Others might need to be reset and reconnected manually. I know whenever I wanna reset the Wi-Fi on one of my little smart plugs that I plug into the wall so that I can automate shutting it off and turning it back on like power, I actually have to go in and reset it. I have to click a button, hold it there for like 30 seconds, completely factory reset the device and reset it up on a different Wi-Fi network. But some other products that you might have around your smart home are not gonna be that hard to set up. It definitely takes time to do this, but it is so worth it. Also, if your router supports client isolation on the guest network, turn that on too. It stops IoT devices from talking to each other and seeing your main network. While you are at it, log into each IoT device if possible and change its default username and password. If you cannot change the password or you can't even access the device settings, that's gonna be a red flag. And honestly, if a device doesn't need to be online, you might just wanna disconnect it entirely. Does your fridge actually need internet access? Does your vacuum? Probably not. You can unplug those data leaks entirely. Just don't unplug your fridge from power. That would not be good for all your food. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, a subscribe would mean a lot to me. Subscribing is a very simple way to support creators on YouTube, especially smaller creators and smaller channels like myself. If you are following along with the challenge, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification so you don't miss tomorrow's video. You can also grab the full checklist and daily recap over at shannonrmorse.com. I also have a Patreon account too, and you can join my s'mores and support my channel by going over to patreon.com slash shannonmorse. That gets you perks like early video access and a private Discord where we all hang out. As usual, all the videos on my channel are free to watch, and I thank my YouTube members and patrons for making that possible. Step number four, lock down IoT. Now that you know what is connected, it is time to secure each one individually. So here's your IoT security checklist. Number one, log into the device's app or web portal. Number two is gonna be change that default username and password, yes, even for your smart fridge. A pro tip here is gonna be creating unique passwords for each IoT device and storing them in your password manager. If you have one already set up, if you don't, that's fine. You can also just write it down in a notepad for now. It is tedious, but it's totally gonna be worth it because one weak password on a smart light bulb can give hackers access to your whole home of smart IoT devices. Number three, turn off UPnP or universal plug and play. This helps devices auto connect, but it's also gonna be an attacker's best friend. Number four, are we on number four? I think we are. Update the firmware on your gadgets regularly. It's your best defense against known vulnerabilities. And number five, skip the cloud backups if you don't trust how they handle your data. Number six will be disable any remote access or cloud control options that you don't actually use or need to use. And number seven, if you bring gadgets to work like smartwatches or connected wearables, you may not want to connect those to your company's internal network. Ask for the guest Wi-Fi instead. That's going to go for your home too. Anything new should go straight to your guest network until you can verify that it is safe. You don't know how other Wi-Fi networks, other than the one that you have access to as an administrator, you don't know how those Wi-Fi networks are going to be set up. So the less places that you're connecting your devices to, the less potential there is for an attack or a vulnerability to get invited into your own home network. What are we on? Number eight? A lot of IoT devices don't just connect, they report back to their manufacturer as well. So in your smart home apps, check for settings related to data sharing, analytics, cloud storage, voice recordings, usage history, disable or limit anything that is not essential to use. And for devices like smart speakers or displays like A-L-E-X-A, -E I'm talking to you, mute that microphone whenever you are not using them you would be surprised how often they accidentally wake up and start recording audio. All right, step number five, audit the network. Security is not a set it and forget it type of thing. Every few months, you wanna log back into your router, recheck that client list, make sure nothing sus was introduced at some point in time. Even after today, make it a habit to check your network, maybe once a month, maybe every couple of months. It doesn't matter to me how often specifically that you do it, just make sure that it's something that you can add as a 
routine to your life. There are some great tools that can automate this for you too. There's Fing, which is a mobile app that scans all connected devices. Glasswire for Windows and Android shows which apps are using your bandwidth. Firewalla is a hardware device that monitors and alerts you about suspicious traffic. These tools will give you visibility into who's connecting and they help you catch anything weird before it becomes a problem. If you see a new mystery device, make sure to investigate it. Don't just let it sit there on your network. And always install firmware updates whenever they are available because the truth is home networks are constantly changing and so are the threats. A little bit of regular maintenance keeps your setup strong and secure. And number six is all about AI and ecosystems. Smart home ecosystems like ALEXA, I almost said it, Google Home and Apple HomeKit, they have added AI-driven routines that automate your daily life, but they also collect massive amounts of behavioral data. So whenever you set up these assistants, review their data retention policies, disable things like training data, sharing if available, regularly delete voice or activity history from those applications. And if you are using AI cameras or doorbells, make sure end-to-end -end encryption is turned on. Some brands enable this by default. Other ones require you to actively go into your settings and turn it on. So you can always Google how to do this for your specific model and brand. Lastly, we have Matter and Threads. I did mention this previously in another video, but this is also somewhat standardized for newer devices, but that doesn't magically make those devices safer. You should still be updating firmware and not depending on just trust in the manufacturer to make sure that everything is safe. And that is gonna be it for day five. Today you learned how to identify every single connected device, isolate your smart home gadgets, and shut down their data collection habits. You are now in control of your network, not the other way around. Tomorrow in day six, we will dive into smart home permissions, learning how to lock down those app permissions, revoke unnecessary access, and make sure your devices only talk to who you say they can talk to. If you found this helpful, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and grab the full checklist over at shannonrmorse.com. I'll see you tomorrow for day six. Bye y'all.